You've probably already heard that thumbnails are super important when it comes to growing on YouTube. Your video can be the best in the world, but if people don't click on it, it doesn't matter. So it's clear, you need to master thumbnails, but how do you actually do it? I mean, when you look at other creators' thumbnails, they just look so professional and clickable, right? But when you try to create a thumbnail, it just looks super amateur and the video performs poorly. Now, in this video, I will break down how you can make thumbnails that make people feel obligated to click on your video. I will talk about what things to include on your thumbnails, how to use text, colors, and I will also go over real examples of thumbnails that perform really well and explain why they work. So why am I qualified to talk about this? I've worked with over 20 business owners, helping them grow and get clients on YouTube. And the strategy that I will talk about in this video is the same strategy that we use with each of them to get videos like this and this. Let's dive in. So before we get into how to create a good thumbnail, we have to actually know like what is a good thumbnail. Obviously, you need to master thumbnails if you want to grow and get clients from YouTube. But most people make the mistake of only focusing on CTR, which is the click-through rate. The click-through rate is basically the percentage of how many people click on the video out of everyone that YouTube showed this for. Now, this might seem like the perfect metric to track, but it's actually not. To prove this to you, here's the CTR of a video that got 11,000 views. As you can see, it's like pretty low. Most people say that a good CTR is usually about 5%. Now here's the CTR of a video that got 1.3k views on the same exact channel. As you can see, it's 10.5%, which is considered relatively high. So why did the first video get 10 times as many views, even with a much worse click-through rate? To understand this, you need to think about the following thing. When YouTube shows your video to a lot of people, a big percentage of them will not be interested in it. This means that it will have a lower click-through rate, because obviously less people will click on it out of the people that YouTube showed it for. But when YouTube only shows it to a couple of people, a much bigger percentage of them will be actually interested and will click on the video. This will result in a higher CTR. Obviously, when YouTube shows it to less people, they will probably only show it to your subscribers or to your like most loyal fans, and they will obviously click on your video at a much higher rate. But the thing is that even with a lower click-through rate that I was talking about earlier, you will get more views. So that's why click-through rate shouldn't be the only metric that you look at when it comes to thumbnails. But you might be asking, so what metrics should you pay attention to? The easiest way is to just look at how the video performs, so the views, and look at also the click-through rate, as well as the amount of impressions that the video got. Looking at these three things should give you a much clearer picture of what actually happened. For example, if views are high, so video perform well, and if pressures are also high, but the click-through rate is low, the thumbnail was probably still good. That's because, as I mentioned earlier, YouTube showed it to a lot of people, so it got a lot of impressions, it got also more views than usual, but the click-through rate will obviously be lower because more people won't just click on it at the same rate as your most loyal fans would. Now let's look at another example. If views are low, impressions are low, but the click-through rate is high, the thumbnail is also probably good, and there's another reason for that bad performance. But let's say in another case, the impressions are low, and also the click-through rate is relatively low, so like lower than 5%. Now that means that the thumbnail probably wasn't good and you will be able to like improve it. I'm not sure how well I was able to explain this, but the main thing is you should look at these three metrics and drive conclusions based on all three, not just like one of them. Now let's get into the actual science behind good thumbnails. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is the thumbnail plus the title equals the results. There's no such a thing as only the thumbnail or only the title. They always go together. So whenever you create a thumbnail, the number one thing you should look at is what your title is. How it works is that people always check the thumbnail first, so it should catch their eyes, and then they read the title, which should make it clear what the video is about. So thumbnails should basically just suggest the topic of the video, and then the title will explain it in more detail. The second thing is that simplicity is key. The single most common mistake I see people make with thumbnails is they overcomplicate it. People only look at thumbnails for half a second or like one second on average. They just don't have time to read whole sentences or understand super complex visuals. The main thing is that they should get the point of the thumbnail just by glancing at it. If you look at these two thumbnail examples, you can see with Alex for more Mosey. It's super simple, it's really easy to understand, and someone who's just glancing at it will right away get the point of the video. On the other hand, this thumbnail has a lot of different stuff on it, a lot of different texts, icons, and like complex visuals, and it's really hard to understand when you just glance on it. And the third one is text and colors. So because people only spend like half to one second looking at your thumbnail, they won't read whole sentences as I mentioned. So your thumbnail should only contain a maximum of four words, the fewer the better basically. Instead of putting words on it, try to deliver the same message visually. Showing rather than telling is super important when it comes to creating thumbnails. You also shouldn't use four to six different colors on a thumbnail 
Try to keep it simple and use only two to three strong contrasting colors. Also make sure to make all the text and icons big and visible as thumbnails are usually pretty small, especially on the phone. Now in conclusion, your thumbnail should catch the eye. It should suggest the topic of the video. It should also complement the title, be easy to understand and simple. It should show rather than tell. It should only contain four words or less. It should contain two to three strong colors and you want to make everything big and visible. So let's look at a couple of examples. First, I will start with the good examples. So here's the thumbnail of one of our clients. Uh, it was actually our first video together. As you can see, the thumbnail complements the title, not just repeats it. It shows rather than tells. Like it shows going from 5k to 5 million. It's also super simple and easy to understand. And it also uses colors with intention, like the red and green color. Now let's look at another one of our clients thumbnail. This basically shows the title visually. The title is basically about how I book 400 plus calls per month. And the thumbnail just takes that concepts and puts it into a visual. It also catches people's eyes because it shows a full calendar, which many people are not used to see. And it's also super simple. Again, simplicity is really important. Now let's look at one of the big dogs, Alex or Moses thumbnail. This basically just gives an initial snippet of the video, but it will also make people want to know more. Plus it also contains four words, which as I said, is the maximum that we like to go to. But for this case, it works super well. And let's look at a couple of bad examples for thumbnails. So for example, this one, it just basically repeats the title. As you can see, it obviously has too much text and it tells rather than shows. It's not like showing anything visually, it's just like text. Here's also another bad example. So this thumbnail is just super overcomplicated. It has a, you know, many different icons, arrows, text as well. And because of that, it's just super overwhelming. Plus also the text and the icons that this thumbnail has is just super small. Now, this is the exact overview of how to create banger thumbnails. But obviously, thumbnails are just one piece of the whole puzzle. If you want to learn how to master all the moving parts of YouTube so you can grow your personal brand, become an authority figure, and sign paying clients for your business, all by just creating YouTube videos, then make sure to watch this video, which is a full free course that I created. It should pop up on the screen right now, so make sure to click on it and watch it, and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.